the season in general, and then we'll take questions. Up to you how you want to do it. Well, <laughs> uh, the season is long past, so uh, it's, uh, it's after New Year and it's 2021, and last year has nothing to do with this year. So, um, so we're back to starting the process over again. Um, we're, uh, I think we made some positive steps last year and um, still got a quite a ways to go. Uh, we, we got a, a good nucleus of players coming back. Um, we're going to need to, you know, to develop and, and get better in a lot of different ways. And um, I think the staff knows, uh, you know, kind of the, uh, the agenda and the objective going into 2021. We're hopeful to play a full season. Uh, we're hopeful to get spring practice. And spring practice will be critical for us. Uh, getting these young players on board and, and getting them uh, some, some experience and some, some time learning our systems. Uh, we had six uh, guys that came in here mid-year that were hoping to be factors into next year's team. Um, but so it's a, we're, we got some work to go. So we're, uh, it is 2021, a new year and, and a new objective. And it started, um, and when we got back to work, which was this week. So our, we started school this week. Uh, players are trickling back. Uh, we are starting school remotely. Um, we're going to have a team meeting next week. We're going to start off season, you know, pretty quick here. And away we go. So we're uh, on to 21. Okay. Uh, for those who don't know, classes are supposed to start again in person on February 15th as of now. So let's go to Rod Mackey. First question. Hey, Coach, can we just get your thoughts on the uh, the players going to the transfer portal, please? My thoughts on them going into the transfer portal. We know that um, given this year has, has been difficult in a lot of ways, Rod. Um, we've had, as you know, players in programs across the country that have opted out prior to the season. Um, I had a few guys opt out at the end of the season. Um, Sometimes guys go into the portal because there's, uh, you know, they see the direction of a program or they see the direction of where their, um, you know, their, uh, their goals and aspirations may not meet the goals and aspirations of the program that they're leaving. So, I mean, there's a number of things that, that lead to that. You know, I know the guys that, you know, we had in our program that were seniors, um, you know, that have, you know, Katie Nixon and, Darion Rakeshaw and Akil Jones, um, you know, guys that have been in our program that have graduated, um, you know, those guys, uh, they still have some opportunities, you know, to, to play. And um, I just think from, from a number of circumstances that our, our department's dealing with and a lot of departments are dealing with across the country, you know, there's, as you, everybody knows, there's a deficit we're all dealing with with the lack of, you know, the funding of what a normal football season would provide for a department. So it's just, there's a number of factors as to why these things do occur. So um, all of them are, have their own way, have their own case by case scenario, but that's kind of the nature of college football for this year, at least. It's, it's a different year and we all know that. And, um, it's it's one of those things. I I don't I really don't know enough about it yet. You know, because it is to me it, it it is more in line. I call college free agency. <laughs> um, I don't know how good and positive it is. Uh, well, I guess we'll know in time, right? Because it's there's a lot of kids that are in the portal, and and I don't know there's a lot of resources for for to support all the kids that are in the portal so it's it's a i'm going to wait and see how this thing works out and a mustard tiger hi coach as you go back and review 2020 what are the areas you feel like your team needs to make the biggest strides in as you go into year two it's really every area um adam i you know, I thought offensively we came out like gangbusters, um, played really well the first few games, and I say the last it started tailing off a little bit towards the end of the year. You know, 
And so we, we, we we're going through that and evaluating that. And, and so there's a number of things that we can clean up offensively, even though there were some real positive things that occurred. And, and we all know what those things were and who those people were and things. So uh, offensively, we, we have you know, enough on our plate to continue to, to improve. Defensively, same, really a very similar thing. Um, you know, it hurt us towards the end of the year. I thought we played really well in a number of places. You know, I think we, we, uh, we did a good job, you know, in, in most circumstances, you know, into the, the latter two games of the season. And, you know, some of it's, you know, we, we, we lost some people along the way and COVID hit and things like that. And we, we just uh, we came in kind of limping in, you know, from, from that perspective too. So there were some, on both sides of the ball, real positive things that were done. Uh, and I know there's some things we can definitely build on and, 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 and hopefully learn from, from from last season. And, but we definitely have a lot of work to, to, to do. You know, there's um, a tremendous amount of work to do. You know, so there's a lot of different areas. It's not just one thing, Adam. You know, on either side of the ball, there's scheme that we got to evaluate. There's players we have to evaluate, and so there's. It's one of those things that I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure our staff does a really good job of of really comb, you know, with a fine tooth comb, go through everything that we've done and and really scrutinize the good and the bad and the ugly. So that's what we're we're going through right now. Let's go to Justin Guerrero. Coach, when, when you look at uh, bringing in a new defensive coordinator, uh, just in terms of your ideal candidate for that position, um, could you kind of touch on just what you're looking for uh, in someone to oversee your defense? What boxes you're trying to check? And thirdly, uh, was there at any point in the season where the, the, the light kind of went off in your head that, that you may have decided that, that you did want uh, some different leadership back there? Uh, we're we're just we're going to make sure that the, the next person that's in that position will will do a you know a great job of of you know just bringing our defense forward you know we we've done some positive things this year um, like I told you and just said there's there's a number of things that we need to fix and and reexamine and and really try try to tailor to our the skill set of our players that are in the program so you know those are things we're going to work on and and continue to 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 be kind of the driving force for us to be as good as we can be defensively. So um, was there a point in the, in the season that led me to this decision? No, not necessarily. I mean, I, I reflected on a lot of stuff towards, you know, after the season ended and flying back from, from Texas, coming home. So I went through about 10 days of evaluation, just me, you know, just going through a lot of things that I've seen this year that, that uh, I want to move forward to, to, that's going to help us into 2021. So um, I'm still going through it right now. You know, I'm, I'm going to comb through this thing is, you know, I'm, there's no time frame uh, in terms of uh, what I'm feeling right now. I just want to make sure that when we come out there and line up in 2021, we, you know, I want to be different than what we were in 2020. And, and like I said earlier on the start of this thing, this, this press conference, you know, 2020, we're going to use that as a reference point, but really 2021 is a whole new year with a whole new objective and a whole new standard of how we do things. So it's uh, – and for us to get those things accomplished, it's going to take uh, a great level of commitment both from our staff and from our players. Brian Hell. Hey, Coach. A couple things for you. You mentioned Akeel Jones. Um, who we have not seen uh, enter the portal. Has he decided to transfer? Um, we, you know, I'm meeting with all the seniors right now. So there's some that, that are going to transfer, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what his goals are. You know, I don't know if he's, uh, if he wants to play or, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure. So, um, but he's one of those guys that he's in that position because he's graduated. You know, he graduated in the fall that he has some options in front of him. So we're actually going to visit after this press conference and and kind of help him with what what's his next step. Okay. And then my other question is just, uh, could you talk about um, the decision to move on from Drew Wilson, who has been here for five years? And, you know, a lot of the players seem to like him. Uh, kind of what's your uh, your thought moving on from him? And, and do you anticipate other staff changes uh, coming 
in the near future as well. I'm going to keep working through that, Brian, in, in every facet of our program. Um, I'm going to continue to, to try to, to, to put what's best for us moving forward. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get our program to be as good as it can be uh, at a level that it should be. You know, I'm evaluating every area that's in and around that supports our football team and, and trying to bring out the, to make the best results, to, to come out and have the best results for our players when we line up and play. Um, and that's really all I can really say. So that's, a, that's an ongoing process right now. Carl, you mentioned uh, spring practice. Uh, I know it still might be a ways away, but do you have any idea yet what that might look like, what, uh, when it might start? Uh, and, and how critical it will be to, to get to that point for this program, obviously uh, missing out on it last year. Well, it will be great to have spring practice, yes. And we're, we're hopeful to start spring practice the end of March. It runs through April, you know, so that's, that's kind of the, where we have it on the calendar for now. Um, so it's a, we're hoping it stays on the calendar. You know, we're, you're asking me, Pat, you know how, you know, <laughs> nothing's etched in stone. Now, since I've been here, nothing's been etched in stone, right? So understand that. But right now, that's where it's marked out to be, the end of March through April. And, and we're hopeful that it's going to be able to, to happen. And remember, there's no spring break this year. Uh, Hart Pizzani. Coach, so I know you mentioned uh, Darian and KD and all those guys who are graduated and have opportunities before them up. Can you give us a run through of like the players who are, have not graduated but opted to enter the transfer portal as well? No, not really. <laughs> I mean, that's those are all personal decisions, and that's not something that that I want to publicize about their reasons why. I don't want to do that, and I know that you guys do investigative work, <laughs> you know, about digging and going on Twitter and phone numbers and all that stuff. Um, all those things that I can tell you this is that they've, they've all been, they'll all be, even continuing moving forward after today. It's a case-by-case -case scenario. There's no blanket reason for, it's case-by-case. By case. And, and that's something that I, I would share with you guys in, in understanding that it's not just because of one thing. It could be a number of things. It can be we've, we've lost players, you know, in the portal because they didn't feel it was the right fit. You know, we've lost players because they wanted to move on. You know, it's, there's, that happens. You know, that's, that happens. And, and that's kind of today's portal that you saw. Even prior to me coming here, uh, we had a young quarterback, Stenstrom, that I didn't even get a chance to talk to that entered the portal and left and had no reason. I don't know. I never talked to him. So I, I don't. I don't, I don't think that's really important to really share why, because they're, they're all different circumstances. And so that circumstance I just mentioned, it had, couldn't have been for me because I never met them. So who knows what that circumstance was? So it, they're all different is my point. They're all different. Um, you can't really put one thing on it. And, you know, and there's, there's nobody's fault. You know, if anything, it's, you know, we, we – I'm going to try to encourage these guys, particularly like our senior players, you know, for, for getting an opportunity to play somewhere else um, and so that they can kind of go out on the way they want to go out if they choose to do that. So I'm, I'm actually going to be here helping them, you know, and I've already talked with a number of colleges on a couple of kids already that, that have strong interests in, in, in our players that, was, that were here. And for them to get a chance to, to end their careers or play their senior year um, the way that they wanted to, you know, on their own accord. So, um, but they're all different. You know, it's not one thing. That's why I can't take 40 minutes to an hour talking about each case by case. Just can't do that. It takes too long. Pat Graham. Hey, Coach, it sounds like you did some serious uh, program soul-searching on that plane ride back from, uh, from the bowl game. I, and I know it's not that long a plane ride, but uh, can you kind of enlighten us on what other things you reflected on? I know that you thought about your defense a lot, but what else did you think about on that plane ride home? How far we have to go. How far we have to go. It was a good measuring stick of where we are as a program, and we're not close to where we need to be. 
So to me, when I was on that plane ride home, it was, you know, getting the, the necessary adjustments for us to be as good as we can be moving forward. And, and like I, I mentioned earlier, we're still going through that. You know, we're working uh, as a staff upstairs with trying to comb through every detail of what the season was and, and where we need to go f moving forward. But um, definitely not where we need to be right now. So that's the biggest thing I would say. We, we, need, we got a long way to go. Jerry Fry. Your success provides a lot of fodder in recruiting and, and image and everything else, but do you have a Pac-12 image issue to address and be aware of as you go out on the trail and rebuild the image of this program too? I don't understand the qu question, Terry. Say that again. The Pac-12, no team in the CFP had a shorter season than others. Is there a Pac-12 image issue you, need, you have to oh. address and be aware of? on the recruiting trail and everywhere else? Great question. Yeah. I'm thinking, <laughs> Terry. <laughs> Great question. Well, I'm, I'm going to put it in my terms because you guys heard me say this already about I'm going to control what I can control, right? So do I think our conference has an image issue? Yes but I'm going to do the best I can at Colorado to help that. Does that make any sense? In other words, for me to change the, the narrative, I got to get this program to be at the level that, that meets the expectations that, we're, that we're, we're putting on this program. And if I do that, that might help us. So I'm trying to control it from my perspective. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Okay. Back to Brian Hell. Hey, Carl, I know you're not a doctor, but Nate Lamont's coming back. Uh, uh, have you had a sense from talking to doctors um, if he'll be ready to play this next season? I know that injury takes a long time. Um, do, you, do you have a sense of how ready he'll be for a fall camp if it starts on time? It's, it's doable, yes, to play. Now, that's going to all depend on, Brian, how well his rehab goes from, you know, from when he starts running, lifting, you know, all that stuff. So, but uh, we do think that he, has a, he should be ready to go by the start of, of fall. Uh, he won't be available this spring, obviously, but we, he does have a time to, to get it ready to go. They say it's somewhere between seven, nine months. Hey, Coach. Um, in terms of, you know, we spoke a little bit about the leadership position on defense. Um, as of right now, have you taken any consideration into promoting from within, or are you looking only at outside candidates at this moment? Uh, both. Great question, Hart. Both. So I am looking inside and evaluating our current guys that are on, on that's already in the building. And um, there is some interest from people outside. I'm actually, actually quite a bit of interest from people outside. So, um, so yes, I'm, I'm actually evaluating both. And I do have, since it's not February 23rd and spring ball starting on March 16th, I have a little bit more window of time to work with. <laughs> and, and so I'm gonna, I wanna make sure we do it uh, in, a, in, a, in a good manner that, that's well thought out. Back to Justin Guerrero. Carl, I know uh, a few minutes ago you mentioned that uh, with respect to, to making that eventual defensive coordinator hire that you don't really have anything in terms of a, a firm timeline or all, but uh, is that at all different with, uh, with the strength and conditioning director position? I mean, when you think of the role of that coach being around the players probably more than, than any other coach and just overseeing the weightlifting and whatnot, is, is that a hire that you'd like to make sooner rather than later? And just on a, a general note, um, how far would you say you are uh, just into the interview process with both positions at this point in time? Okay. Well, we're close to being done with the strength coach. So in answering your question, Justin, you know, that's first and foremost right now, you know, is, is because our off-season program is going to start up here quickly and we need to have that in place. So that's, that's close to being done. Uh, obviously, the, the, the defensive coordinator position is not. And, and that's going to take a little bit more time. But um, 
you know, we went through a, a, a pretty good process of trying to hire the right coach uh, for our strength and conditioning, and we're pretty close on that. So with, we're probably within days of getting that done. Pat Bram. Hey, Coach. Uh, Sam Noyer had a nice season. Brennan Lewis gave a nice spark. You have JT Shroud coming in as a transfer. Uh, how set are you a quarterback, and what do you expect come spring ball? Great competition, you know, and that's kind of, you know, I, I, I kind of let out to your – I was really encouraged by Brendan Lewis, right? He played a really good – I thought he played really well. And that was fun to see him get in there and play. His first time playing in a college game is in a bowl game against Texas. So I think it, he, uh, he came out with a, a positive grade for sure. So I'm really encouraged by that. I'm hoping he uses that experience of the game and he kind of rides that momentum of his play going into to this spring. But this spring is going to be all about competition. You know, it's it's a new year. Like I said earlier, it's 2021. We're rebuilding this team with uh, the goal in, my, in mind of playing our best 11 on both sides of the ball. And and that's that that's that's the new thing. So there's no, you know, even though on paper we have returning starters and all that, well, they better make sure if they're returning starter that they, they are better than who's underneath them because it's, it's the bottom line. It's, it's all about every position coming out, playing well, and, and being challenged and being competitive uh, to play our, our best 11 on both sides of the ball. Terry Cry. Has Sam Neuer assured you that he wants to come back, and have you assured him that you want him back? Yes and yes. Could you and, talk about what, about his progress during the year and whether uh, doing that after being off for five years gives considerable promise for next year? In the future? I think so. I mean, he's, you know, he'd be the first to tell you that, Coach. I, you know, and he he said this actually. He didn't play very well the last couple of games, and, and and he knows that. But he also knows that he's come a long way in a short period of time. And, and we're not understating that, too. So we're, we're excited about where Sam came from and, and what he did this year. But in his mind, I can tell you, he's already, even though he won't be able to do much throwing this spring or any, at all, at all he'll, be, he'll be really into locking down his knowledge about our offense and our passing game and, and trying to take a bunch of mental reps that he won't be able to take physical reps. So um, he knows he has a huge challenge. Uh, of of really trying to take the next steps as a quarterback, but not being able to, to physically do that this spring. So, but he's up for it. That's why I said yes and yes. He'll be ready. Ryan now. Hey, coach. In in the short time I've gotten to know you, I I, I know that you're driven uh, to succeed and, and get this program going. But I'm curious if you were able to take some time off for yourself after the bowl game and just step away from football and, and kind of breathe a little bit. <laughs> I have, Curtis is here laughing at me because we were just talking about this. I took very few t – I took maybe three days, okay? But I didn't take a lot of time. Um, it, I guess when you're in this seat, you, your, your mind is, is rolling all the time. You know, it's hard to just relax. It's hard to just think you have a, no cares in the world. You can just kind of hang out with your family and all that. And even when I am hanging out with my family – you know what I'm thinking about is football. I'm thinking about something in about this program. So not much time, Brian, in answering your question. Um, I know that's not healthy. I know that because I'm, I've had a number of colleagues in my career that have been burnt out in this profession doing it this way. But I am, like you said, I'm very driven about and passionate about getting this thing right. And I think the pivotal years for that to happen, for it to change and be set in foundation and done, is these first couple of years. You know, that really sets the trajectory of where you're going. And it's, so there's still a lot of work to do. And, and basically that's what I wake up to every morning about the next step on my agenda. And, but uh, there'll be a point in time where I can feel like everything's in place, that I could maybe exhale, but just like when I got this job on the 23rd, that's next month. God, that's not that far away. But, you know, I've been really – I haven't rested very often, no, in answering your question. That's why coaches' wives are uh, viewed as saints a lot of times, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the rise – that's why coaches' wives are special. That's right, because um, 
thank goodness my wife, you know, with my kids being older and out of the house and we're empty nesters, you know, she, she actually has a better life right now because she's out doing what she wants to do with her friends and, and, the, and she knows that I'm at work and I'm not bothering her. And so she's, and she doesn't have any kids to, 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 my, to raise right now. So she's, um, uh, she's probably enjoying her life a lot more than I am right now. Mark Hey, Coach, it's kind of a two-parter uh, here, just in terms of evaluating the running back position, because we know Jarek will be back, and coming back from that injury should be even further to 100% next year, which is kind of a scary thought. Um, but also, we saw that Jaron Mangum entered the transfer portal, but Ashad Clayton uh, sat out the, la- the bowl game. Is there any stat- update on his status? Um. Okay, so I got your last question about Ashad, whether his status. Did you have a question about Jarek? And or? Yeah, just in terms of since he was, you know, you said that he wasn't exactly 100%, he mm-hmm. was maybe 90% last year. Um, what a 100% Jarek Broussard could look like. I know. Isn't that scary? I, 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 I think we have uh, a, a good backfield, you know, a really good backfield. And don't forget, you know, the kid that – was our leading rusher the year prior, he should be back in Alex Fontenot. You know, so we have some depth. You know, we have some depth. We have Deion Smith who, you know, he's with his uh, surgery. He should be, you know, both those guys should be running around a little bit. They probably won't be in full speed this spring. But, um, yeah, Jaron um, Mangum did decide to leave. Um, and, uh, again, like I said, there's many stories, right? So there's, there's – everybody has their own case. But there's still really good depth there, if you think about it. Um, Ashad will be back. You know, he's, he's back. And, you know, he's uh, – I know he opted out towards the end of the year, and now he's back. So we're, we're missing one player in, in Jaron. But everyone else is, is back. So um, – we're hopeful, you know. It's like going into last year, if you think about it. You know, when, when I was telling uh, Dave Platty and the guys here in our building about, you know, who's this Jarek Broussard kid? You know, how, what's, what's his rehab coming? And they were telling me that, well, he's going to miss spring. And, you know, he won't be really ready full go until the end of summer. And he might be ready to go by the start of training camp. And, and, and all those things were true. And then look what the year he had. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that we have a good enough depth in that position that somewhere down the line it's going to – someone's going to emerge and, and going to be a really good player for us, just like what Jarek did this year. We're hopeful Jarek does it again next year, but Jarek knows that he's going to have to come and earn that job again this year because last year has nothing to do with this year. Does that make sense? So it's going to be really competitive. So in other words, Alex Fontenot can come and say, well, really, that was my job, that I just got hurt, and he's, you know, he's going to be battling for his job coming. So it's, it's going to be extremely competitive. And I love every minute of that, <laughs> every minute of it, because that's why you're going to have a good backfield, because it's going to be very competitive. A couple more for you, Carl. Uh, first, uh, Rod Mackey. Yeah, Carl, you touched a little bit earlier about Landman. Uh, a lot of us, when we saw him go down, we thought that was it for him. Um, can you just talk about the excitement to have him back, what he brings, obviously, on the field, but but he's the, obviously a huge deal off the field as well with these guys. Well, when he called me after the bowl, and, and you know, I, I thought it was going to be a call of, Coach, sorry about that, and we didn't play as well as we should have and all those things cause for him watching the game, but it was more – Coach, I just want you to know I've talked with my family where I'm coming back. I, that was the best news that I had in a week. <laughs> so I was excited, you know, to have him back in. And I think it's a great decision on his part. You know, it gives him a chance to, to get back healthy and, and to pr- hopefully play a full season, you know, with, with great football instead of, you know, the, the number of games he played this year. So uh, it was an extremely pleasant boost, you know, for, to, to hear that. And, and, and really, he knows there's unfinished business. You know, he's, you know, Nate Lamon, he gets me. You know, he gets, we're, we're kind of built the same way. You know, even though he's a, I'm an offensive guy, he's a defensive guy. He's very passionate about his play and how he plays 
in what he does for this football team, just like I am about getting this team to be the best as it can be, you know, as we move forward. So um, he gets it. He does. And, and it's good to have that type of leadership back in your program. And, and, you know, he's got a ways to go, like you guys have mentioned earlier. But, you know, if anyone that can get back and ready to play for the fall, you know, I don't question whether Nate Lamon will be ready. And Terry Fry? This is a bizarre and exceptional year when you're talking about precedential standards and experiences. But it had been a while other than the Vanderbilt experience for, for you in college football. What did you learn about the state of the college game since you left UCLA and, and how – is it different? How much different is it? It's different quite a bit. You know, my UCLA time, you know, we didn't have Twitter and, you know, all those things. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, recruiting was, which, which was a different process than it is now. You know, it's, uh, it was even at the time in the early 2000s, though, recruiting be, was becoming a, a year-round process it was a 24 7 process it was and a lot of coaches were complaining about it you know and and I remember at that time and and it's uh it, it's it's gotten where it's still the same way it's probably more exposed than it's been back then uh just because of social media um so it's a uh, it is a is there, there is a sign of the times of change you know and and I've had to adapt to and um uh, I, I've got some great, great teachers, you know, that are here in the building that have helped me, you know, make that transition, you know, with, with t today's recruits. Now, the thing, the process, is t in my mind, is still the same in terms of when you're out evaluating and, and bringing in talent is um, I'm old school this way. And, and Dave Platty knows this, is, is that I'm a big, I want as many eyes as I can on a recruit, not just one coach recruiting his player saying that to the head coach that I want this guy. Uh, I don't operate that way. We, we get a lot of yeses to say yes for a recruit. Um, I, I believe that's going to help this program get better, faster, and, and, and more uh, a stronger foundation from this process because we're going to really thoroughly vet every recruit that's coming in here. And I don't know if they've done that in the past. And that's, that's probably the last thing I'll say negatively about anything that's happened in the past prior to me. We're going to fix that. We're going to make sure we recruit uh, the type of players that are conducive for our systems to play. And, and it's not just the physical side of it. And I think this is where recruiting, um, in my opinion, is, 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 comes up short, is that you've got to get to know these players. It's not just watching on huddle and you're watching their highlight tapes and say, oh, my goodness, this guy's a great player. Well, we need to dive into the personal side, too. You know, we need to know what that player is as a student on campus, you know, and what the, you know, the professors say about him, what the principal says, says about him, the head coach says about him. You know, we need to know if, if the crosstown rival game, if you're talking to that opposing coach, what do they think about this kid? You know, there's a lot of process that goes into recruiting. And, and being honest with you, Terry, a, a lot of coaches scoff at that because that's too much work. But guess what? That's what we're doing. That's how we're going to do it. And we're going to thoroughly vet these players coming in here because we can't make mistakes. You know, we can't make the mistake of him not understanding the standards of what we're looking for. Because that has to be really spelled out in recruiting. You know, what were our expectations of that player to, to ascend and do his job, you know, within this football program? So a lot of that stuff takes work. And it's, it's not going to be just by a huddle highlight tape and saying, oh, oh that guy's a five-star. We need to take that guy. Um, I can tell you in my background, you know, there was two really good players that I had. Um, Matthew Slater. You guys know Matthew Slater, NFL All-Pro. He's been a special teams star for like the last 12 years. He was my last recruit of my first class at UCLA. He was a two-star. Nobody, you know, he was, you know, they didn't know if he was a receiver or a DB. You know, he was just this great athlete. And he comes to us, and he's a, he's a young 17-year-old college student, 
so he's young. He's on the younger side, and has a has a has a you know, kind of a career that didn't quite know where to put him because he was just this great athlete. But he came from great, great pedigree. You know, his dad was an NFL All Pro offensive tackle for a long period of time, and. He came from a great program, and that coach said, "You know, I'm not. We didn't know how to use him. And then we, he comes to UCLA, and and we he was our kickoff returner. He, re, he returned two kickoff returns for touchdowns, and he he was our our five our L five on our kickoff coverage team, and he was blowing up everybody inside the 20 yard line. He was he was doing all of these things so well, and I said, man, I, I said this guy, we can just we're just going to use him on both sides of the ball. We're just going to put him in places. Well." He ends up being drafted by the Patriots, I think, in the fifth round or something like that, and has a 12-year career as one of the best special teams players in the, in the NFL. And the rest is history. And my point of the matter is I can go on and on with players like that. I had Alteron Werner, who was a corner that I had at UCLA. Again, last guy of that class, Mayfair High School in Los Angeles, was a 4.0 student, two-star. He has a 10-year NFL career. It's because he had more heart and determination and, and work ethic that made him a great player. And he ends up having a great career. I can go on and on. You know, I can go on and on. So the point of the matter is I, I try to research everything about a kid, not just his ability on the field, but what makes him tick off the field and how is people that are off the field what is their perceptions of him so it, it takes a process and because I've had success and not to say that I'm going to only go for two stars men don't go and, and say that Brian that I'll shoot <laughs> Carl's is going for low low level kids that's not the point but the point of the matter is is being thoroughly vetted that's how we're going to recruit and we're going to make sure they're the types of kids that are conducive for us, for us to be successful. So you're saying Matthew is not built like Jackie? Built like who? Jackie. Jackie Slater. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, you, you've, Matthew is, looks more like me, and you know how big Jackie is. So I, I think Matthew got all of his talent from mom, though. You know, mom was, was I, I heard she was a, an athlete, a sprinter in high school, so. All right, since no one connected the dots, I'll ask the last one. <laughs> see, Terry and I are older. See, Terry and I can banter that way because we, we're older. A lot of these guys are young guys. They probably say, who is he talking about? Who's Jackie Slater? They're Googling. Is that what they're doing? Terry, <laughs> uh, Since nobody connected the dots, 1988, you're a graduate assistant at UCLA. There's a defensive back who's now the new GM of the Denver Broncos and George Patton. And he How about that? I know. <laughs> you know, Rick George asked me about him because he was hired a couple of days ago. And he says, hey, I hear they're going to hire George Patton. You know, I heard, and he said he, Rick knows his agent very well. And he says they want to kind of get together at some point in time to say hello and all that stuff. And he said, do you know him? I said, uh, yeah. He's a UCLA Bruin. And I kind of left it at that. So... Um, so yeah, we we've crossed paths, and 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 George is a great hire. I mean, George is excellent. Uh, Rod Mackey just left our call, but he's he's. I know that he covers the the Broncos a lot. They're going to really like George. George's very passionate, knows football. I mean, he works hard. He's a man of integrity. Um, he's had opportunities to leave prior to this year, and they just weren't the right fit. And just said, no, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. And I think he. I'm glad he made the choice to come here because I look forward to seeing him. Great. Carl, thanks for taking the time today. We'll reconvene on signing day in February. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Appreciate it.